Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's been on the hook. I know it's been a long time. I haven't been here since Labor Day and if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. If you are new to this channel, I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please like this video before you click away. Later on in the video, you might get busy and you might forget. So please be sure to like this video. For regular viewers, go ahead and like it if you think you might so you don't forget anyway I have not been here since Labor Day I thank you for coming back I hope I didn't lose any of you but I did need a break for many reasons I'm not sick I have not had a health problem I <laughs> just want you to know that and nobody in my family has been sick either I just had some things to deal with and I needed some time off to do some thinking and some designing and some things that uh, needed to be done and I just needed some, some days off when I wasn't always looking to do a video on Monday. And that is one thing I wanted to tell you that next time this video may come out on the Thursday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And so you might want to make sure you're subscribed and make sure you've clicked that little bell. Sometimes the bell becomes unclicked and you have to be careful because uh, you might miss out on several videos. And I plan to do giveaways in all of my early week videos and then later in the week I might do another one and choose the winner or the next week in the first part of the week so you'll have to kind of stay tuned and that's okay most of y'all do anyway and I thank you so much for coming back now I have uh, received many emails asking me uh, when I'm coming back and so I'm back today and today is October the 25th on a Monday on a Tuesday so it's kind of an odd day for me but uh, this was the day I felt like I could jump on and do a video for y'all so uh, I'm here and I hope you enjoy your time with me uh, grab your favorite project and have a seat get a little something to drink and let's visit now I did receive a, uh, a lot of emails asking me where I was and when I was coming back. And so I answered, tried to answer all of them. I think I did. But there was also uh, someone that sent me a postcard. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Those are wildflowers from um, Washington, I believe. No, Oklahoma or somewhere. I don't know where they're from. Anyway, they're desert wildflowers. Look at that. Look at that. That's from Karen in Washington State. So Karen, thank you so much for the postcard. Thank you for the nice note in, uh, on the other side. Thank you so very much. Very sweet. And from all of you who sent me emails and asked me how I was doing, I thank you for your kindness and your, uh, your care. And I'm back. So everything's okay. Uh, I'll tell you a couple of things that I did while I was away. And uh, I did some traveling. I did some traveling with my husband mr on the hook and uh, we didn't go very far we didn't go very far no farther than 100 miles and you probably know where i went but um, our grandsons are playing flag football now and so we spent some time on the road with them and uh, some other reasons as well now in regards to this beautiful postcard from karen in washington uh, i took some video of our fall foliage in the backyard and we have some woods up behind our house and they were absolutely gorgeous one day and so I took my phone and I took a you know a one minute video so stay till the end I will show that to you after I show you Joe's video I have a friend that makes project bags and she has graciously sent me a short video I have another one to show in my next video but I picked one and this one I'll show today it's not very long at all it's at the end of the program so be sure you stay for that she makes the most beautiful custom project bags and as far as ordering one I'm not sure if you can I would say probably no because <laughs> Joe's always working on a waiting list so I'm not sure where she is with that but I just wanted to let you know that that will be coming up in the show so be sure to stay tuned as you know from my last video I had an issue uh, with one of my um, subscribers and that's settled now I haven't heard anything more about that but it threw me a little bit for a loop. I don't know why, but I guess because I've been recording steadily uh, for three years and actually never took a vacation ever, maybe one week off or something, and, and usually tried to get all of that taken care of before I left so I would have a video to go out. So I've been recording steadily for the last three years, and I just needed a little time off to... Um, get my mind straight in to kind of understand where I was going with this channel. I haven't really changed trajectory that much. 
Um, I do want to continue to design crochet wearables. Uh, that is my focus and I'm still going strong with that. While I was off these few weeks, I absolutely went crazy with designs and I uh, had to pace myself. <laughs> Because I was crocheting all the time and I didn't even do as much diamond painting as I wanted to and I'm not going to show you the progress on that maybe in my next video I'll show you that um, I haven't made a whole lot of progress on my angel playing the flageolet which is a beautiful diamond painting that I'm working on and y'all have asked me about my progress and I haven't made a whole lot of progress maybe a couple three inches across the way and I'll show you that the next time we visit another thing I was doing was dealing with um, a company who is looking out for someone who says that they have copyrighted two words together and those words were think pink and as you know I released a sweater uh, three years ago in 2019 called the think pink top okay think pink top and it was done in a pink uh, I think it was King Cole it was James Brett cotton DK beautiful beautiful um, beautiful beautiful yarn and this is what it looked like this was the think pink top and it was released three years ago now somebody came up with the think pink as the um, slogan for uh, a sorority who has decided to support breast cancer research now totally fine with that but I did not name this think pink because of that <laughs> but they have decided that they own those two words together so i had to rename my pattern and this has all been happening over the last few weeks and with attorneys and people writing letters and all that so i changed it to perfect pink top i have republished it i've taken all the words think pink off my videos from three years ago i had four videos that had those two words together and so they can have those two words. I'm not worried about it, but I did have to change all of my pattern and my videos to accommodate these folks. So that was another thing I was dealing with, but mostly I was designing crochet patterns. And as you know, after I left last Labor Day, which was probably six weeks ago or longer, um, last Labor Day, I had released my fall uh, lookbook, a beautiful, patterns. I really enjoyed doing that. It took me a long time to get it done. A couple of months really writing fast and trying to make sure that the patterns were accurate and that I could um, come up with some patterns that I thought y'all might really enjoy. So I designed a poncho, a jacket, a skirt, a purse, and a cowl. And I put all those in the fall lookbook and they're on my Etsy shop you can find them there and they're in a bundle right now. I do plan to release those one at a time in the future, but to do that, I have to create listings and do all that. So it'll be a little bit of time, but if you want the fall lookbook, it's out there on my Etsy shop and it, it has five patterns in it and they're not difficult to make. They're very easy to make. I'm gonna talk about a couple of those today, but I wanted to tell you about my Think Pink, whoops, turned into my perfect pink top. So you wouldn't go, where is that pink pink? think pink top I I still y'all are still buying this pattern so I just wanted you to know that that has been changed to perfect pink which is you know very descriptive anyway now what I'm wearing I'm wearing my multicolor cardi I just released this last week and I thought I would wear green because I'm going to wear green with uh, uh, some something else that I'm I'm going to show you a little bit later in this broadcast. So uh, I'll stand up and let you see what this looks like uh, in the full view. Well, this is my multicolor Cardi, and I just love it. I don't know why. I just do. I just love it. And I love the way it looks, but I also love the way it feels. I made it from a DK weight yarn, and I'll show you just a minute um, what most of the yarns were. Now, they weren't all the exact same brand, but they were all a DK weight yarn, and it makes for a very nice cardigan. It's not hot. It's not heavy, and um, it keeps you very, very warm. I've been very toasty in this, and um, it's not difficult to make. Now, because I striped it, <laughs> in different yarns and I had to join different yarns as I went uh, on the stripes, uh, went through the stripes actually. Um, I made this from the bottom up in the circular fashion and so that's a little different from any of my other patterns. I've never written one like this. 
but it took a lot of frogging and whirling around, but I did figure out how to do it using measurements only, not stitch counts. So if you'll see along the side, I'm going to turn around. You can see that the stripes are all matched up perfectly, and that's because I crocheted it in the round, and we crocheted it from the bottom. And then I show you how to break for the sleeves and how to uh, decrease to make the neckline look special. We don't want it to go straight up. That is very easy to do, and it's okay, of course, but I like to make things a little more special. It's optional. If you don't want to do these decreases, you don't have to. You can simply go straight up on the side fronts and crochet it that way. But while you're crocheting in a small piece, it's easier to do the decreases because you come across them quickly. And you can, uh, if you mark each one with a stitch marker, which I always say to do, then you'll know where your decreases are on each side and make sure that they match up. Just like you want to match up your stripes. But honestly, you don't have to match up all the way until the bottom of the sleeve. And then you have to kind of make sure that you're doing the same stripes along the fronts and the back. As you go to crochet the back, um, you'll want to um, stripe it the same way as you did the front. It's not difficult to do. Now you can also use a self-striping yarn to make this. It will make it much easier. And I'll show you later about my poncho and how that works using a self-striping versus a of, of, of different yarns that you just add color as you go up and you're not using the same uh, hank of yarn or the same skein of yarn you're uh, trading out colors and that's what I did with this so let me come up a little closer and we'll talk about how I constructed this cardigan first of all I made this cardigan with mostly city tweed and that is um, oh look at this camera I can't get used to it <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, this is City Tweed DK weight yarn, and I buy it from Knit Picks. You can see that right there, Knit Picks. And I'll put the link to their uh, shop on the, in the description box. But the colors were varied. I used all different colors of City Tweed in this, and I also used some other brands. This one was from um, Knit Crate. It was one of their Malabrigos, actually, one of these and then on down and this was a mini skein from last year's um a mini skein from last year's craft house magic advent calendar <laughs> i had to get that out um, but i just used it on a couple of rows see so i can use it all the way around the back see right there i, I caught it right there and that's the where it continues around there and mostly these are from city tweed uh, but they're not all from City Tweed. I, I just grabbed some yarns and actually when I didn't have as much yarn I only did it for a couple of rows. See there? Up here I had quite a bit of that so I used that for three rows of yarn. Can you see that? So this was obsidian which is almost black right here and I used it for the rib that goes all the way down the front and then it also goes around the bottom of the of the cardigan. So um, you actually start off with this rib. So it, whatever yarn you have the most of, you can use for the ribbing around the front and the bottom and the sleeves. I also used it around the sleeve here. Um, I would pick a yarn that you have quite a bit of, maybe a whole skein or half a skein at least. Um, I'm not sure how many yards it took to do the ribbing. I was changing colors so often that that's just up to you. This is a stash buster. So I went into my stash and I found all these colors that I wasn't using and I thought you know what I just need to make something out of that that you can use for a stash buster and the the stripes don't have to be the same width see this stripe is much wider than this stripe right down here so you just cro you just crochet till you feel like you have used all the yarn you want to use and then you put that away and use another color so it's really a lot of fun to do I did um, my, the first thing that I did, I got a large project bag and I went to my stash and I said, what colors can it have to be DK? I wanted to get them all the same weight. So I just started pulling colors out and most of them were the City Tweed. I had ordered like two uh, balls of a lot of different colors trying to decide what color to make one certain sweater that I made last year and Obsidian won out. And of course, I had a lot of that left and so I used it here and I think I even used it here. I think I used it in both places, but I don't list the colors that I used in the pattern. I just tell you to go to your stash 
and find all the DK yarn that you want to put into your sweater and you just throw it in the bag. Then you kind of look at it and decide where you want it to appear on your sweater. Do you want it to be, um, you know, up here near your face or do you want it to be down at the bottom? And down at the bottom I did some of the lighter yarns right here that I, don't, I didn't use them up here. I used the, the darker colors that I really like <laughs> around my face. And then if you use lots of colors, you can use lots of different shirts to wear under it. You know, a, 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 collared, a collared shirt or a turtleneck or even a t-shirt. If you make this out of cotton, think about how much fun that would be. If you had DK cotton and is nice and lightweight and you can stripe your cardigan you can even make it a short sleeve cardigan and just stop right there and put the ribbing on and you're done i mean there are so many things you can do with this particular pattern so i released this i believe it was last monday i don't remember what day it was <laughs> but this is what it looks like on um i think it looks like this on etsy i'm pretty sure that this is probably the main photo but uh, I have some other pictures on it. You can see the back and how I lined up the colors. And mostly the colors are lined up. Um, right across here, it's hard to line up because the this, this stripes are going this way and these are going this way. So I started it right about the elbow and I matched them up there if you can see. See, see that? Well, I'm trying to point this silly camera. There it is with the pink. And so I lined them up there like that. And, and, and that gives it some symmetry, you know, but up here it isn't quite the same. But that's okay. It gives it a little bit of interest, too. You don't want everything to match up. So, anyway, it made it very easy to use different yarns. But you can also use a uh, self-striping yarn. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? And this because you're using it all the way from the bottom, so all the stripes are going to look lovely with each other. And then you start here, and you can color correct it if you want to, or you can just let it fly, whatever you want to do. But at least the body from the underarm to the bottom will all be matched up. Up. so you know it'll just it'll just look really uh, continuous that way and um, I can't remember if I ordered some I was thinking about ordering some uh, self striping yarn to uh, make another one of these I'm not sure if I ordered that or ordered something else I don't know I've ordered several little pieces of yarn that I'm going to be receiving in the next week or two so that's enough about the multicolor cardi that's what I'm wearing and loving every minute of it I've been wearing it quite a bit and just it's just so comfortable I really really like my it. fall lookbook I had a, a cowl pattern and here's the cowl that I made for the fall lookbook and it's an easy cowl to make but it looks very it looks very difficult to somebody just looking at that they go how did you do that it's not difficult Jeannie never makes difficult patterns I try to make them as easy as possible but this is done I believe in either a fingering or a DK weight I cannot even remember. It may be a fingering weight, and I think it's this yarn right here. <laughs> a, a sample of everything I've made is in this sweater. Uh, but anyway, that's what I made from my original fall lookbook pattern. The, the cowl pattern is this one. Then I received, I had received some Knit Crate wool that's the falling leaves cowl by the way sorry about that falling leaves cowl but i had received this from knit crate and this is a beautiful bulky weight bulky weight gorgeous yarn and you know for the life of me here it is oh i thought that i didn't have the yarn ball but i do and this is audine wool's mellow there's the tag that goes on it by it's by knit crate right there and it's called setting sun and it is 80 percent alpaca 20 percent tensile bulky weight 125 yards on the hank hand wash dry flat i had two hanks of this and i rolled them up and this is what i have left this is not very much maybe maybe 10 or 15 20 yards maybe of that and I made the Falling Leaves Cowl in that particular yarn, but I made it um, until I ran out of yarn. Basically, I, I, when I quit, I thought, well, I just can't make it any longer than that. <laughs> it's just too, gonna be too big. So I seamed it up. I made it all in one length and I seamed it up. And then I made a double cowl out of it. So you make the cowl this long and then you flip it over your head 
and you make a double cow. It makes a really nice, thick winter cow right there. And it's so soft and wonderful. Now, if you run across some really soft yarn, I suggest you make a cowl with it because it's up around your face. And it's, it's going to be, you know, you're gonna to wanna to pull it up when it's really, really cold outside. And if it's scratchy, it's ridiculous. You don't wanna wear it and it just goes right in your stash. And so anything that's really soft and smooth to the skin, uh, not so much squishy, but soft and smooth. Um, you can make a cowl out of it, whether it's fingering weight or DK weight or any other weight. Uh, this is bulky weight, and it really is very warm. I love it, and it's a double cowl, so I just made it twice as long as the one in the pattern, and then I sewed it together, and the, you've got a cowl. And it's a really nice Christmas present, too. I think I mentioned that somewhere, that this Falling Leaves cow would be a very nice Christmas present. It doesn't take long to make. Once you get the hang of the pattern, the stitch pattern, you can make it very easily and quickly. So uh, this is a very nice Christmas gift, and this is even nicer Christmas gift, but you should make one for yourself. If you find some really nice, bulky, soft, but mostly smooth, um, yarn then this is the one for you now if you uh, it doesn't have to be wool this is alpaca but it, it doesn't have to be it can be just a, a really nice acrylic maybe a, a premium acrylic uh, there are different grades of acrylic some acrylics are very very rough and they're not comfortable to wear they're great for other things but you don't want to wear them you know, maybe for an afghan or something but um, for something really super, super nice, this is what you want. Something out of a really nice yarn. And it only took two skeins to make this very long cowl where um, I'm sure this didn't take much at all. I, I just wanted to make it small so that you can make it as a Christmas gift. But you can also make it larger. Now, I'm going to move on. This is... Uh, just a potpourri of ideas. I have so many other ideas that I want to show you and I'll do those in my next video. I can't use, I can't show them all in this video and I didn't want to do a lot of editing because I want to get it out the door and go ahead and take care of business. So I am showing you the new knit crate that came in. I'm still a member. I get this every single month and I also get the Malabrigo every quarter and I think it's a great investment for me. I have received so many beautiful yarns from Knit Crate. I don't not like any of them. Is that possible to say? That means I do love them all. And uh, I actually have an order out for um, three more skeins of one of their yarns to make something with. It's a DK yarn and it's absolutely soft and beautiful. And I think it's alpaca as well. I must just really like alpaca. Now, some of you who can't make that, go to Hobby Lobby, Michael's or Joanne's, and go to whatever weight yarn you like working with, the DK or a fingering weight or a bulky weight or a worsted weight, and find the softest, smoothest one you can and then buy that one. You can do it. You can feel those and usually I mean I can't feel the knit crates before they come in but um, they're always very very nice I've rarely had one that wouldn't just be really nice as a cow I've made a lot of cows out of their yarns that come in because they are such beautiful luxury yarns and they're very very nice and when I, when I get two hanks, I don't want to spend any more money on it usually unless I'm just really taken with the color or the the type of yarn it is. So I uh, have been trying to make something out of the two hanks that they sent. Now this month they sent me a knit crate and the theme of it is Pop Dreams. Pop Dreams and there you go. This girl is too young to be doing that. Uh, she looks like she's about 13. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old or something. Anyway, that's too young to be in the front of the makeup mirror and wearing something uh, kind of immodest. I don't know. I don't know why I said that, but I, I just, when I first got this, I thought, whoa, she looks like my daughter did when she was about 12 or 13. And, and that's too young to be putting on a face of makeup. And it says, the music is thumping, the lights are flashing, and you're ready to dance all night long. Well, you know, there you go. Uh, I don't understand that. But anyway, I do love the yarn that came with it. <laughs> The yarn that came with it is Natology, and it is um, it is Natology Swirl. There it is, right there. Natology Swirl by Nick Crate, and the color is Dance Party. 
and it is 65% merino and 35% alpaca worsted weight all right worsted weight speaks to me because I love a luxury in worsted weight because whatever you crochet with it it's going to go fast before that and let me show you their extra in there was soak and this is a very nice um, soap that you can soak your woolens in and uh, then block them out. And I've gotten to where I don't even use my blocking pad unless I'm really trying to stretch something. I just lay it out on the dryer. After I roll it in the towels and get all the moisture out of it, then I lay it on the dryer and the dryer is either running or not. It depends on if I'm doing my laundry. But I lay it on the dryer, lay it out flat, and it dries very nicely. You don't have to stretch and pull unless you're trying to make something longer than it is, really. And usually it just goes back to the size it used to be some other time. But anyway, that is Soak, not sponsored. Just uh, This is scentless. I love the scented, but I guess more people might be you know, allergic to the smell or something, the aroma. So this is Modern Care for the Laundry You Love. And let's see who makes this. This is made in Canada by Soak Wash Incorporated. So if you're looking for them, I don't see, oh, soakwash.com, soakwash.com. I'll put it right here, um, soakwash.com. And that's where you get this. I like Eucalan, E-U-C-A-L-A-N. Yes, that's correct. Eucalan right here and I love that as well I buy that by the bottle and I just pour you know a couple tablespoons into a bowl of warm water not hot and then I push my sweater or whatever it is in there and I squeeze it really well I turn it over and squeeze it and I leave it for 30 minutes and then I take it out and I actually empty the the bowl and I put it back in the bowl and I kind of run water over it make sure it's not hot and you run water over it and squeeze it until you know most of the suds come out. I don't like to leave the eucalyptus in there because when I have it seems to leave a little bit of a film on the wool. So I, I rinse it fairly well, not totally out, and then I roll it, I lay it on the dryer where I have two big towels already. I lay it down there, I kind of straighten it out, and I roll it up in the towels, and then I squeeze the towels, unroll it, and then I lay it onto the dryer without the towels underneath it. And it dries very quickly, maybe a couple of days if you're not going to be doing laundry it's a lot easier not to have a, a sweater sitting on your dryer but anyway that's a little bit about what the extra was in there the actual uh, yarn is this is so gorgeous it's got a little bit of a halo see that alpaca has little hairs on it and you'll find those on your clothes every now and then if you're using alpaca but this is um, a really nice plum colored yarn that is plum to me or grape you know something like that and so I thought, what should I make with this? I'm not buying any more of it. I'm just going to use the two hanks. And I'm going to try to make something from it. So I pulled this out of my pattern. It's called the Purple Party Beret and Rib. And I can wear it up against my skin. And so um, the cowl will be an easy make for me. And I'm really excited about that. Plus, I love to wear purple in the wintertime. So... Um, that's kind of on my desk. It's not uh, the top priority. I have a couple things that are top priority right now that I'm working on, but that was the knit crate for this month. So there you go. This is a quick look at my uh, fall lookbook. Let me get Crystal over here. She asked me, could she model for me today? And I said, of course you might. And there's the back. Oh, this is the front and center poncho. And this is a, such a soft and wonderful, wonderful um, yarn. I, I got this from Lion Brand, not sponsored. Lion Brand uh, of their Superwash Merino wool colors. There are lots of colors out there and I chose five different colors for this particular poncho. And this is my fall look book on the very front page. This is it. This is the first pattern and I really um, I really love the way it came out. Now I call this a poncho and because the sides are open like this it's a poncho, see how that is? But it's really called a ruana, and the reason they call this a ruana is because it has sleeves built in. See the sleeves on there? I built these sleeves in so that it would stay on your, on your arm, and instead of ponchos just flopping around everywhere, they're not connected uh, much under here. Sometimes they are, but mostly they're open on the sides, and so you have all this open area, but it doesn't stay put. So I liked having the sleeve 
in in the poncho. I liked having that in there. And that I've read that it's called a Ruana. I don't know why it's called Ruana, but it is. Uh, I call this a poncho because most people understand when I say poncho what I mean. Here again, it's open on the side and there's your sleeve. So um, it's, it's just very easy to wear. Um, I haven't worn this one as much because the winter weather isn't quite here yet. It's still cold, but it's not cold enough for this. This is going to be for a very cold day. I wear it with a black turtleneck or a white turtleneck or a gray turtleneck and it will look very, very nice. Now, that is what Crystal is modeling. I'm modeling the same pattern, only this is a self-striping yarn, and it's been easier to crochet much faster, but it's not as definitive as these stripes, but it is a self-striping yarn, and because you're crocheting uh, top to bottom, then you get your stripes going this way, which everybody likes. Those uh, vertical stripes always make you look thinner. Now, this is, of course, the same pattern. It's open on the sides. See there, it's open on the side, and it has a really nice sleeve, and this sleeve is even longer than this one. I uh, did some more rows on here, decreased it so it would fit my arm fairly well, and then I added ribbing at the bottom just like I did over here. This is a, a wider ribbing, and this is a narrower ribbing right here, just only about an inch. That's all I put on there. And then I matched it with the bottom ribbing, which was very easy in the self-striping. This was the last step, so I went back and uh, put the rib along the bottom, and of course I sewed it up first, and you only have to sew a little bit under the sleeve, just a little bit right here from here down about four inches, and then you have to, sh to show this sew the shoulder, and then you add the sleeves on, and you do the trim work, and or trimming around the neck, and you're all done. So it's, I have worn this quite a bit. I have worn this quite a bit, and I've had a lot of compliments on it. I don't know why, and it's a lightweight sweater. This is what I made it with. It's called Manaya, and that is a Hobie brand yarn. It's 65 super wool, sorry, 65% superwash wool and 35% acrylic. And look at the colors in that. They, they just spoke to me when I saw them online. I thought, I've got to try that. This is a four weight wool and it looks a lot smaller than that. In fact, it, it crochets up a little bit smaller than a worsted. It's not really a totally worsted weight wool, but it says it's a number four. And uh, on each, on each, um, cake. It's a huge cake. This comes in 558 yards. So it just, it's huge. And uh, I used one cake plus about a half of another one, but I'll tell you where that went. I made a hat to match this and let me go get our little model for the hat. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I uh, wore this hat on Instagram. I took a picture of it and uh, this is Goldie. This is one of my beautiful uh, head models. Isn't she gorgeous? I love her face. Let me get up that. Isn't she beautiful? I paid a little extra for her, and she was well worth it. She's quite gorgeous. And this is, she's wearing my uh, front and center slouchy hat, and this is the same pattern as another one I'm going to show you that matches the other poncho. So this one matches this poncho, and I use this um, yarn right here to make both the hat and the poncho or the ruana and this is what I had left so I had probably I don't know 20 yards maybe left out of two cakes and they're not cheap but they're quite worth it they're soft and just easy to crochet. I never had one bit of trouble with it, even ripping out. It wasn't difficult. I frogged out a little bit on the hat because I was trying to make sure I got it right, and it was, you know, it was, it was frogging out very, very well. So again, this is my front and center slouchy hat, and I put more slouch in this one. Let me hand over here. I put more slouch in this one than I did in the other one. It's just a you know, big slouch on that one. You don't have to use that much. I tell you in the pattern how to do that, and I'll be releasing that pattern this week. So if you're interested in the slouchy hat, I'll uh, put the pattern out there, and you can make one of these. Now, I also made one to match the front and center poncho, and uh, this one turned out really nice. This is Ruby, by the way. She is quite lovely as well. Let me get her up there where you can see her. Isn't she gorgeous? And she's modeling my front and center poncho 
hat and I, I'm calling this the front and center slouchy and her slouch is not very big look see it's just a little bit of a slouch just a little bit right there but I made it to match the poncho as you can see they match each other I don't know if that would be too matchy matchy probably would be if you had uh, the hat if you had the hat up here like that I don't know it's kind of cute anyway I made a hat to match each one of these and discount code will go out to the community this week as long as the pattern the pattern will be out on Etsy so if you're interested in getting that it's not going to be real expensive but um, it took me a long time to get these together I don't know why I, I've made plenty of hats before but on this one I actually was trying something new I tried a very long rib here this is a very deep rib and then I was actually going to t turn it up like that and I was going to wear it like this and you could certainly do that you could wear it like that it looks better when it's on a person actually no nope. <laughs> I don't mean that is a bad thing but um, I, I designed it like that first and then I thought you know what I like it just with the long rib on it I just like it with that deep ribbing right there it goes all the way to right there and then the hat begins so um, you could make this very quickly because you don't have to put this much slouch in it I tell you in the pattern how how to put the slouch in but you don't have to you can make it as uh, long as you want to and then uh, if it fits you and my head is much bigger than this I don't know it doesn't look like that but yes it does look how much bigger I am than her <laughs> I have always had a large head so I made this to fit me and it's a little bit big on her so there you go anyway those are my two front and center slouchies that I made to match these front and center ponchos so uh, I hope you like it I I, uh, I love the poncho I plan I'd like to make another one I don't know I'm, I'm all in, into other designs now so I probably won't make another one of these but I would like to um, have another one I don't know if I'll make one or not but um, I like the fact that they have sleeves in them so they stay put it stays put when you're moving around it stays put and it also is open on the side so you know you can make it a little bit smaller than you need to and uh, if you're a little fluffy in there it doesn't matter if you eat a big dinner it doesn't matter you can do that with one of these ponchos on so there you have it another little piece of my fall lookbook is a jacket that I that I made out of homespun and this is the yarn that I used right here if you're a crochet or a knitter you probably know what this is it's been around forever it's a lime brand homespun yarn and this is what it looks like um, this is the harvest color this is not available anymore uh, the one behind me is available if I remember correctly I think it was still out there in fact yes it is because I ordered that uh, I found this in my stash from last year might have been two years ago um, and it's a size 5 bulky on each one is 185 yards and um, I really like it it's not easiest thing to crochet with so I used a large crochet hook for that and I also uh, made it very simple so it's not got a lot of detail on it it has some edging on here around the edge and I believe I used a reverse single crochet on that and around the sleeves as well and I made her to match my um, crocheted skirt that's also in the fall lookbook so let me move her back a little bit see if I can get crystal back here you can see her um, this is my uh, beautiful purple Mary Maxim um, great value yarn and it is as soft as it can be I really like it and I made the skirt um, and actually crystal has on my my slip underneath it <laughs> I bought a black slip to wear under the skirt because you don't want to wear it with the holes and it's got lots of holes in it but they're uh, in a diagonal here and in different stitch patterns there's a lot uh, of interest in this skirt because I didn't want it to just be plain and down at the bottom I don't know if you can see this probably not but there is a border area that starts right about here and it goes down with a different stitch pattern and then on the bottom I have a little bit of a scalloped edge and it makes the skirt look so handmade it is quite beautiful and then you can pair it with uh, a jacket or a sweater or a poncho or anything you want and um, wear it with some black boots and tights and you're good for the winter time so I really love the skirt I know y'all wanted me to make a skirt and I did I put the pattern right in the fall lookbook so if you're interested in a skirt pattern it's in there as well 
Now that's all I'm going to talk about my fall lookbook today. I also made a purse, and uh, I'll talk about that next uh, next video. I I'm, I'm, I designed a purse that was very similar to a Japanese knot bag, but it also had a shoulder strap on it, and uh, that's in the fall lookbook as well. So if you're interested in that, it's on my Etsy shop. It has five patterns in it. Again, it has a poncho, it has a jacket, it has a skirt. It has a purse and it has a cowl. And if y'all remember, this cowl right here is in there. So for Christmas gifts, you could take the purse and the cowl and make one of those for everybody. And also the hat pattern will come out on its own this week. So um, those are also great for gifts as well. If you have some, um, if you have some yarn lying around in your stash, it's great. It's only about 200 yards, I think, is what it took me to make the large slouchy out of worsted. Now, uh, I made it with small stitches. See those stitches right there? Those are pretty small. But then again, if you want it to be warm, you know, it needs to have, you know, kind of a tight crochet stitch. All right, so that's enough about my fall lookbook. I won't talk about that anymore, except I'm going to talk about the uh, purse next time and there are several other things I want to talk about as well. I'm running out of time here. I signed up again with my grandson's magazine subscription and um, I renewed my cross stitch magazine. I know not everybody loves this but this is just cross stitch which is a beautiful beautiful magazine. This particular edition is the um, December of 2022 and it has some Thanksgiving things in it. I wanted to show you just a couple of things actually yeah, a couple of things. The Beauty of Change. And this is a really pretty cross-stitch uh, pattern. It says, Autumn reminds us to embrace the beauty of change. So gorgeous. Look how simple that is. It's probably something that actually I could do. <laughs> I couldn't promise that, though. And then at the end of the magazine, the last half of the magazine is Christmas cross-stitch. And I just love these. These are dimensional dimensional Christmas trees and you stitch them flat and they're stitched in kind of a uh, round format on a square piece of, of cross stitch material and then you cut them out and then you roll them on to uh, I think it is a heavy paper uh, of some sort this is how you stitch them see I don't want to show you the pattern it's not correct to do that but I this is how you do them in, in a circle and then you wind them up and stitch them together and they end up looking like that so cute and here's one that I really like this is happy holidays <laughs> it's a little dog dogs are my favorite cats not so much but I do love dogs and that one just looks so happy happy holidays so cute anyway this is going out to a winner on my next video I can't promise when that's going to be but um, it'll It'll be in my next video, so be looking uh, for your notification, and you'll know when that'll be. So it's just cross stitch, and if you're interested in this, put a comment down below in this video, and write the word cross in the in this comment, and you'll be in the running for that. Of course, I have a crochet world, and this is the end of the year. This is December 2022, and it's beautiful, beautiful. There are a lot of beautiful things in here, and I marked down a couple that I wanted to show you. This is... A very scrappy lapgan, and I hope I haven't shown this already. I don't know if I have or not. Is that gorgeous or what? It's scraps, just scraps. And what you do is you, of course, use one color uh, for the for the outside border, and also to run with the colors that you grab out of your stash. So it holds those colors together in kind of a con continuous loop, as you could say. And that is very very nice. That's a lapgan, so it's not. It's not like making a huge afghan or anything. And then this is the dish towel elf, and I thought that was so cute. Let me get her around here. Whoa, get it down there. It's made with a worsted yarn, of course, and she's just hanging on the refrigerator door. Look at that. See, mine don't do that, but her little arm is wrapped around the refrigerator door. It's a perfect place to put a towel instead of always on the oven. Always is, uh, Towels are always on the oven for some reason. And then this one is the Holiday Delight Lapgan. <laughs> Someday I'm going to figure this camera out. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Love it. I just love that. I think that is so gorgeous. Look at that. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. The Holiday Delight Lapgan in the Crochet World December uh, edition. 
And if you want this and you're excited about this, write the word world in your comment, W-O-R-L-D, world, so I'll know that you're interested in this particular magazine. So the, the uh, keywords are world and cross. And if you're interested in both, put them both in there and you'll be in both runnings for these two magazines. And I'll be probably getting those until uh, the end of time because I keep um, adding on to my subscription every time I see one of those um, magazine subscriptions from my grandsons they use that to help raise money for their school so i figured why not i'll just give those away to one of my lucky subscribers so be sure to sign up for that now i want to show you some beautiful fall foliage it's just about a minute long not even a minute i don't think but i'm i'm talking over it too so if you, you may have to turn your volume up i hope hopefully you won't i'll turn it up on this video but um, i wanted to show you this beautiful fall foliage in my yard last week some of the most beautiful beautiful colors on our earth are the autumn colors in the trees and our backyard has just sprung alive with some beautiful colors this autumn. I just wanted you to see these. I use these as inspiration, these colors, to create some of my crocheted wearables. And I just am so grateful for these gorgeous colors to uh, combine. You can buy, combine these two colors, like the yellow and the red right there in that frame and then move over here to some beautiful green and yellow and then red thrown in there is a contrast color so gorgeous now this is the end of my show and I want to show you Joe's video this is a, a beautiful project bag that she made for someone and uh, I think she's shipping it to England so let's take a look hi this is Joe with Joe for totes and it's been a long time since I've sent a video to Jeannie to show on her YouTube channel but I do have a couple of bags that are going out today, and I want to go ahead and show you these. They're going to England, to Alice, and I've made other bags for her in the past. And this time she wanted a small bag like I'd made her in the past. This was 7x7. Seven seven. This is the medallion on this bag that's smaller than the normal medallions. The inside on this is the same as the larger one I'm going to show you that I'm sending her as well. as decorative embroidery on, embroidery on the handles. The inside has a little snap pouch that's got clear vinyl so you can see through it. And the other side has a little cloth pouch that she can put things in. And of course she has the stitch markers that's color represent the same that are on the bags. And so this turned out to be a very cute little bag for her. The other is the traditional size, 11 by 11. And again, the medallion on this one is, I thought, very pretty. The decorative stitch on the handles um, if you can see those on the wrong side, <laughs> this is the decorative stitch. And on the inside, as I mentioned, she's got a clear vinyl pouch with a snap. And on the other side, she has a cloth pocket. And then she also has these stitch markers on an elastic tab that she can put her markers on. So this is just a very pretty bag that's going to Alice. She lives in England. And I'm getting these in the mail to her today. And until I see you next time, this is Joe with Joe for Totes. Bye. Thank you, Joe. So beautiful as usual. I have another Joe video that I'll show in my next video as well. But I thought you might enjoy seeing something custom made that's quite beautiful, even if you can't afford it or don't want it. It's just beautiful. And I love the way she crafts her bags for her customers and, you know, what they like, what they don't like, what themes they like and she goes right with that and spends time just planning the bag so I really appreciate that that's hard work and Joe those are bags that you make are just absolutely gorgeous so I guess that's all I have for today I am going to take off be sure to like this video before you click away and write your comment in the comment section don't forget and sign up uh, as a subscriber and notify yourself with the bell. It's so easy. And also, I am in the first line of my description box. I'm going to put the link for the community. Be sure to try, sign up for the community. It's absolutely free. And when you sign up, you actually get a pattern free 
uh, after you sign up. So it's nothing you have to do, not a lot of information. I don't want your address or anything like that. I think you have to put your email in and I ask for your first name and your birthday and your birthday date, not your birthday year. Don't put that in there because I don't want to know. I won't want to tell anybody mine either. <laughs> so be sure to sign up for the community because you will receive a notification when I put a new pattern out on Etsy and you'll also get a special offer code for a substantial uh, savings on your the new patterns that are out there and also the ones that are already there and then in the future if you see a pattern you want and you don't have a special offer code that's only limited then you'll have a 20 percent off offer code you can use anytime for any of my single patterns not the fall lookbook it's already on a discount so um, just know that and this is a 20 percent discount that you can receive on any single pattern in my uh, Etsy shop so be sure to go out there and cruise around see what you see if you see something uh, it's, it's pretty easy to order one so uh, thank you for everyone um, buying my blue sky pullover as well that was something that was released too and I might show that in my next video uh, if you haven't seen it it's the blue sky pullover and it was only released on Etsy and on my email uh, I didn't show that on my video, and I apologize for that. I will show it on Miss at least Crystal. At least she'll be wearing it. So be sure to join me next time when we find out what's on the hook.